The following is a presentation of The Day. Welcome to the John T. Conway Gymnasium on the campus of New London High School as Game Day presents Championship Volleyball. It's Championship Week on Game Day, and tonight, it's the number one Lyman Memorial Bulldogs and the number three Wheeler Lions in the Division II Girls Volleyball Championship of the ECC. All of the action live on game day. Game day is brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile. When you visit our office, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team will give you the personalized gentle care you deserve. Contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information and of course, after the game, you want to find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. At the center of it all, it's Foxwoods Resort and Casino, the Beach Boys, featuring Holiday Vibrations Orchestra November 26th. Tickets on sale now, foxwoods.com slash entertainment. Only at Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Casey O'Neill along with Madison Canistrari, and thank you for joining us again. It feels like it was just yesterday that we were at Mohegan Sun for the Volleyball Invitational, and it was, in fact, this Lyman team that we saw on that day, and they've made it back to the championship game against a bit of an underdog, the Wheeler Lions. So we are ready to go, and Wheeler will serve, and I would be remiss if I didn't say somewhere out there the sports doctor is smiling. His Wheeler Lions are in a final live on game day. So serving for Wheeler will be Anna Ruggeri, the senior, gets us started with an immediate ace. ace on the first serve of the game. Wheeler jumps up 1-0. When we saw Lyman last time, we saw the, the dynamic duo of Carly Darone and Cassidy de la Tour. We expect them to take the brunt of the work again tonight. And there's Darone with the Another ace. attempted and she can't get to it. It's a right two nothing right off the rip. Two very good serves. Yeah, nice and deep. Lyman's really on that back line. If Ruggieri could drop this one short, they're going to have to go running forward for it. Third one, another good serve. This one's handled. And we'll get our first look at Darone. Wheeler looking for a weak side spike. And there's the first point for Lyman. They will get it back, serving down 2-1. And it will be Jerome with the serve. Jerome with glasses on today. We were just saying, I don't remember those in the first time uh, we saw her. So either new additions or someone lost a contact lens. But doesn't affect her serve. There's a bullet ace to tie us at two. Another good serve by Darone. Good dig from Garcia. And nice little tip by the tour. And there is Looks like there was a touch on that block. Yep, Gardella with the kill there. So far in the first couple of points, we, we see Lyman, they like to set up Latour and Darone. Mm -hmm. well, so far, we haven't seen Wheeler in a position where they've been able to set up any Right, hitters. they haven't really had a chance to pass the ball, get a set, and go for a hit. They're sending a lot of free balls, which is giving Lyman all of those chances to really easy pass, easy set, easy kill. Called. I think Jerome said that one. It was a double handle on her yeah. set. So. so Messina serves into the net and it'll go right back to Lyman. And Lyman will send Erica Arpin, the sophomore, to serve. Lyman in the blue, Wheeler in the maroon and black. Lions and Bulldogs. Arpin. And she's ready to go. And that was a 
point for Lyman as that ball sailed into the net. Wheeler couldn't handle it off the serve. Harpin very deliberate with her routine. You see she has a very clear service routine. Nice deep serve. Just gotta pull those passes off the net a little bit to get started. on the weak side. She hasn't had a real clean look yet. No, even during warm-ups, I don't know if you noticed, a lot of her balls were going deep on that back line. So she's not, she's staying underneath the ball a little too much. She's not getting that top spin. Arpin will continue to serve. Lyman opens up a three-point lead here, 6-3 in the opening of our Division II championship game here. A little bit of a backspin on that serve. Ooh, a little... Net skim right there, but handled well by Lyman. There's Darone, and she puts that one away. There was a nice top spin on that one. She stayed behind the ball a little bit more and got that wrist snap. And check that, Latour. Latour on the near side. We're going to get a quick timeout. And with this timeout, we'll send it to a timeout brought to you by the Burns Agency. You like it better? Better Burns. Much better. So much better Burns. Ride insurance at the right price. agency can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19 32. 7-3, Lyman in a loud gym, rocking here at New London High School's John T. Conway Gymnasium. Arpin will continue to serve a good timeout by Wheeler coach Megan O'Connell. That's a good deep serve on the line. He's got a lefty on the right side. Lyman gets the point there, but yes. Wheeler's Bryn Anderson, I think, surprised everybody with the left. But Arpin's on a little bit of a run right now for Lyman. Nice deep serve again. And there's a good kill back for Wheeler and Barry Libero. Abby Vuchumovic will go and have the serve. There's a power spike from Latour. Now they're going to go to the other side. Great defense by Wheeler right now, keeping the ball alive on these hits. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a joust at the net. Lyman takes it. I, I'm starting to believe that Wheeler is a defensive team. And I, you know, I'm not seeing um, the big hitters that we're used to seeing in some of you know that even right. Lyman has, but they seem make up for it yeah. with their defense. Absolutely. Yeah, they're getting to everything, and that they're overturning that ball. I think Lyman might have been in the net. It appears that that's what they're saying. So it will go back over, and Lyman Wheeler will continue with the serve. Eight five, Lyman on top. Miscommunication on Lyman's side. Three girls going for the ball at the same time. I like the serves here. One thing and another thing, all of Wheeler's serves up till now have been hard and line drive. Mm -hmm. uh, very aggressive, and I like that. It makes the decisions that much harder for Lyman. Oh. 
I don't know if you saw that, though. Garcia did a great job. She wasn't the one passing, but she backed up her. Who was it? Um, Mia Tardy was passing that one, but Garcia was behind just in case. They slipped through or needed to get that ball. So they called, what, the double touch again on the. Uh, right. You see how Garcia is backing her up? Oh, nice job into no man's land goes Gardella. Gets it back for Lyman and they'll have the serve. And they will send, you know, I, as we say it all the time, you know. No, no, no. Yeah, you know, it's, it was definitely a thing last time. But Gardella will be, have a chance to carry the momentum of the previous play with a serve that she sends wide. And so Wheeler will have it back and they will have their service at that. So in to serve for Wheeler is Allison Needham, sophomore. Nice float, sir. Going to Latour. <laughs> she was too strong. That one was into the net. And just like that, Wheeler's got back even at nine. talking there. It's a great set. And that's going to earn the point for Wheeler, and they'll take a 10-9 lead. Now Wheeler, in order to get here, needed to beat Putnam, which they did three sets to zero, and then Wyndham, uh, three sets to one. Lyman cruised, having won three in a row, 3-0, New London and Plainfield in the tournament. So. Two teams playing very well. Wheeler has won seven in a row. So Wheeler clearly playing well right now. And that one sails out of bounds and it'll go back over to Lyman. A very competitive match right now, back and forth between these two teams. And so, we we'll get our chance to see Cassidy Latour, the senior. Yeah, these teams haven't seen each other since September 14th, so a lot of progress, I'm sure, on both sides. Kind of have to make some in-game adjustments and see how it goes. I'm loving the defense on Wheeler's side. They're all in position, set, ready to dig before that ball is even hit, which is exactly what they should be doing. They are seeing and reading it very well. Into the net on um, Wheeler, a double hit. Double. Double hit. Yeah, so their setter should have just gone up with one hand and thrown it over. Yeah, I think we see why Wheeler gives teams problems, right? Defensively, they are sound and they are a, a team defense. They're communicating very well, too. I mean, Messina just let their setter take that so she could set the ball. A lot of the times, hitters try to step in and take that one, and then you take yourself out of being able to hit. Jerome with the kill for Lyman, and they'll get it back. Latour will continue to serve up one. So definitely two different styles. Lyman relies more on the outside hitters, especially Jerome and Latour. Wheeler mm -hmm. seems much more defensive oriented and anybody could be hitting it over the net at any time for them. Right. Nice pass. Oh, that was a rocket <laughs> from Messina. And that was not a, that was an unusual, uh, that wasn't a spike as she was flat footed. Yeah. But she just hit a rocket right just over there. Just a nice net. controlled down spin hit. Emma Cunningham will serve for Wheeler. All tied at 12. Going towards Darone. And a That's big a hit there. That was great. Back like, row. Yeah, Cunningham comes up from her service spot Actually, and puts it away. No. I think that was. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yes, it'll be easier once they switch sides because our rosters go in the other direction. I <laughs> Gotta cut them in half. <laughs> I request that for the next time I'm here. Yes! 
get the sense that Wheeler's starting to settle in a little bit now as well. Oh, nice play at the net. Keep it live. Out. And a big hit from Avery Brooks. Last time we saw her, it was her birthday. We had <laughs> wished her a happy birthday on the air. And now she comes in with a big spike for the kill and a Oh, it looks like they're in. calling a touch. serve for Lyman. And that goes wide off of Garone. And it will stay over with Wheeler. And a one point lead, 14-13. Skyler Morgan will have the serve for the Lions. Nice defense. Jerome with the hit, and that'll be a kill for Lyman, and it's tied up at 14. Of course, this is our sixth of seven championship games in three days. Last night, we had the triple header field hockey, girls soccer, girls soccer, and now we have girls volleyball. And there's been a, a theme or a trend thus far, which I will mention after this rally is done. Big put away from Jerome. We started with boys soccer, one seed versus two seed. In the second soccer, it was one seed versus three seed. And the three seed was Stonington, the defending state champions, no, one, no one's three seed. Yesterday was the one seed versus the two seed, the one seed versus the two seed, and the one seed versus the two seed. And here today, it's the one seed versus the three seed. So it's been a tournament in all sports, devoid of Cinderella's and upsets until you look at tonight. The Division I championship game between the number three Waterford Lancers and the number five Fitch Falcons. Fitch upsetting Griswold, undefeated number one Griswold, and Waterford upsetting East Lyme. So the nightcap tonight will be featuring two teams that I think before everyone thought it was gonna be Griswold and East Lyme, and instead it's right. Waterford Fitch, and Fitch in particular, that's a big upset over previously undefeated Griswold, so. In five sets, too. With Jerry in to serve for Lyman, it's 16-15, Lyman on top, excuse me, for Wheeler. Ask and ye shall receive. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Wappi, for the roster accommodation. Great block on Wheeler's side, Lyman defending it, though. Miscommunication, one of the rare times. Addison Stanley let that one go, thinking that her teammate was behind her. Her teammate thought she was going to get it. An unusual. Yeah, I think that's the first one for them. Wheeler's doing a great job of talking and being loud. Darone with an ace. Oh, no. It was not an ace. It was not an <laughs> ace. I think everyone thought it was, except for the Wheeler player who realized it wasn't. But it's a winner, and it's 18-15. So we'll. Uh, Lyman opening up a little bit of a lead here, heading towards that crucial 20 plateau. Nice and loud this time. Yeah, you heard the talking. And that was sailed wide by Gardella. So Wheeler will send Messina to serve. Uh, it's a nice effort from Garcia, but she's a little too far out to be able to get that one over the net, and Wheeler has cut it to one. This is about as a small a front line as we've seen. That one went through the rafters. Stayed alive, didn't actually hit anything. And a winner, kill on the far side, ties us at 18. Val Barajas put a charge into it. 
and Messina will serve 18 all. That one goes long. And Lyman back on top in what has been a competitive and seesaw affair here in set one. Back to Arpin serving. She's got that nice deep serve. Deliberate routine. She takes her time. And that's a side spin right on the line. Great spot. Great set for a lefty right side. And there's the power of Cassidy Latour as she gets the kill in Lyman first to 20. Another very good serve from Arpin Deep. That one was a little questionable. That was, yeah, that might have been a out of, might have sailed long if they had been able to really be in that spot. It's tough, you yeah. know. Oh, absolutely. Court awareness is one of the hardest things to learn sometimes. But Libero did a great job of passing it. Oh, that's a good set. A little tight. Oh, it's still alive, it's still alive! Oh, big hit though by Latour. I'll tell you, you, you know, you hitters, are such <laughs> prima donnas. That was a beautiful say, yeah, that's a little tight. You know, get, get me my room. Well, she's so. left-handed, remember. So I, you gotta I, give I her know. arm swing time to come through. You don't want her to hit the net. Just pull it off a little bit. That way you have room to swing. Listen, if I had a dollar for every time I had a big kill in a volleyball match, <laughs> I'd have a dollar. So I am deferring to you on absolutely everything. And right now, Wheeler, sees what had been a tie match now. They're down four and nice you can see out, the end in sight. So we've got a timeout and with that timeout, we'll take a timeout from the Burns Agency. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. 32. So, an issue we did not have at Mohegan Sun uh, is the ceiling? intricacies <laughs> of rafters and ceilings. Now, this is a high ceiling here at New London, but uh, there's a lot of, of different things that can happen like that when Very a ball might a hit a light or hit a rafter. And we'll break that down for you right here as LaCour oh! stuffed at the net by Anderson. I love Anderson's face as she did it. The surprise and the smile was so big on her face. Like, oh my gosh. Did I just do that? Yeah. <laughs> that was Cassie Latour absolutely letting rip. And Anderson went up and got the block, and she's still excited about it. That's huge. Speaking from experience, not fun when you get blocked by someone shorter than you. And uh, that's a winner, as you saw in the net. Yes, in volleyball, the net is in play if it goes over the net. So be it. That was a. In indoor and beach, grass volleyball, it is not. Can you get, guys, can you get on the same page, please? <laughs> Great up. Latour, very smart. She changed pace on the on the hit, and then that time saw a presence of mind to let it drop. Absolutely, but I give Rogeri a lot of credit. That's a great thing on her part. Unfortunate, it went over and out of bounds, but that's still in Latour's head a little bit. Gardella. Like, oh, I'm diggable. Lack of communication, that's gonna sail wide, and that's gonna give us our first set point. 24-20, Lyman, Gardella with a chance to give the first set to the Bulldogs. The crowd likes it. It's a great pass. The lefty Anderson, I look, she might be tiny, but she can get up there. 
is mighty. Yeah, Wheeler does a great job of setting all of their players. And another and one. Well done. I believe that one was Skylar Morgan. It looked like it was a double block, Skylar Morgan and Anderson. So Allison Needham will have the serve, and Wheeler not out of it yet. Great pass by Garcia. Big hit, nice dig. And there it is, Avery Brooks with the stuff and a 25-21 first set win for Lyman. Set two coming up. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Judd switches over to the right foot, now dumps it off, and a shot on goal, and a goal! Maddie Archer from 20 yards out, bangs it into the upper right corner of the net. Yeah, you know, and, and I was one of your listeners on the way home from work today and, and listening to some of that. Yeah, there are a lot of similarities. I think lacrosse, you can kind of say the same thing, you know, the more you can move your opposition. Oh, what a save! And the follow-up goal, Plainfield ties it up. Beautiful shot, Carpenter made the save and the putback. We are tied at one. Ball, centers, shot, deflected, in front, loose, and cleared. Big play. Irons was able to get there and clear for Plainfield. Judd with time. Judd. Irons will settle. Loses it. Splitting the middle. Dangerous. Done a ton of that uh, so far in the second half. Very much in the middle. Carpenter, left foot, low ground ball. Save made. Nice ball down the sideline. Cutting it back. Center, there it is. Oh, step in, Irons. Got there first. Here's a clear look, shot, and a save divine. Carpenter had the look, put it beautifully on goal, and divine was divine that ball or feet in this case you know uh, that might be a situation where they can build off that vol under a minute vol tries to put it to carpenter carpenter switches right foot carpenter let's fly save shot goal congratulations to the lyman memorial bulldogs on their Division II ECC Championship with a thrilling victory over a game playing field team and a literal last second victory. After the game, we're gonna find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Summer isn't over at Foxwoods. Summer's never over at Foxwoods. For more details about all the entertainment you can find at Foxwoods, go to foxwoods.com. Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. The second set here in the Division II Volleyball Championship about to get underway. First set went the way of Lyman Memorial, 25-21 over Wheeler. But you really were impressed with what you saw defensively from Wheeler. Absolutely, they're so sound, their feet are ready, they're seeing where the hitter's facing everything, they're digging almost everything. And as a hitter, that's the most frustrating thing when you can't put a ball to the ground because the defense is just getting a touch on everything. It gets in your head, I mean, you have to, Lyman really needs to switch it up and maybe add in some more tips, some roll shots, just to maybe throw Wheeler off. Um, so yeah, defensively, I'd love to see more out of Lyman, and offensively, I'd love to see more out of Wheeler. Wheeler really hasn't had a chance to put any balls down, but they're defensively so sound. And Addison Stanley and Michelle Messina are the two tall, what would, you would think would be the hitters for Wheeler, but that's not the style that they play. They're much more ground-oriented, defensive sound, which is in contrast to Lyman, who is 
always looking for Jerome and Latour on those outside hits. Right. Yeah, Wheeler does a great job of just going through all their hitters and setting up whoever. And a nice look right there, dumping it in by Arpin for the first point of set two, and Jerome will serve. That's a, that's a hard serve, but handled well. And the then player. Messina with the kill. And that was the first real Absolutely. aggressive. Nice wrist snap yep. straight to the ground. And Off the, of her own pass, which is pretty impressive. That's right. And like we say in volleyball, the person that gets the kill gets the serve. Messina will have the serve. It's a thing. It's going to be a thing. <laughs> and then another net winner. That's two for Wheeler now. Another serve for Messina. Another one of the net. Very hard. Lyman out. A little out of sync right now here in the early part. Wheeler up 3-1 and another serve for Messina, who has the hardest serve I think we've seen so far toward the net. That one was a little bit higher, easier for Lyman to handle. Nice block by Wheeler, though. Out of bounds. But that was Anderson and Stanley. They combined, but they got a little bit too much of the ball. So it turns over, and Arpin will have the serve for Lyman. back to the center of the court. Nice float serve, just a little wide. So when we're here in the gym, there are many obstacles up there, Steve. There's the basketball hoops that are up, there's the lights, the rafters, and you know, if, if feeling froggy, there's ceiling fans. What, so what we were talking about is if the ball, let's say Wheeler hits the ball up into the rafters, it hits the rafter and stays on their side. They have another touch, the ball is live, you can play it out. If it goes over the net and hits the rafters, it's Lyman's ball. If it hits the basketball hoop, I would say, I mean, it's usually up to the ref's discretion, but it's usually live and you can play it off of that. It's a little wonky sometimes if it comes straight down. And then we said it's pinball if it comes off the fan. So, much like wiffle ball in the backyard, you have to play it. You're playing it off the, off the basketball hoop. So that's still live. Yes. Uh, that's a well, nice job by Garcia there for Lyman, keeping that one alive. And again, with great dig. Oh, that's a great, this is a great rally. Uh, net violation by Lyman. Yep. Now, if it goes in the basket, on the basketball hoop. Is that two points for the team that gets into the basket? I have never seen that happen. I mean, at, off the backboard into the hoop. I want to, I mean, I think you should get credit for. Right? You should get two points. If it gets stuck, it's a redo. A nice deep serve. Lyman down 6 2 here in the early going, looking to get it something back. And Wheeler out to their biggest lead of either game, 7-2. So one more and probably a timeout. Kuchimovic with another serve. Having a bit of a struggle passing these on serve receive, which you're not able to set up Latour on that outside as well as you want to. Nice back set. And there's Bryn Anderson with a little bit, got a little bit out of uh, whack with the timing on that one. So turnover, Lyman will have it, Gardella will serve. And that goes long and right back to Wheeler. So 
in to serve for Wheeler is Allison Needham. Both teams have super deep serves. Almost on the back line every time. Waiting for call, they're saying that was in, all right, so. Which is interesting. The line ref is calling it out, and usually they're the ones that have jurisdiction over that call. And I think that's what. The up ref can't overrule that one. So right now, Cassidy will tour having a chat with the official trying to get a ruling so she can convey that to their coach. If it sounds loud there, it is loud here. I know, Both. I got a thing on my watch saying I'm at 90 decibels. <laughs> well, see, P Peter Wappy just, that was, an, he just got very happy about that. You, you got a decibel level, Peter. <laughs> now I'm gonna be curious the whole time, like, can we get to 100? Can we get to 100 decibels? Wheeler, do Wheeler. Wheeler doesn't give up any point easy. I see why Wheeler gives teams fits because they don't let anything happen without, there's four no. bodies. On the ground, if the ball's on the ground, there's a body on the ground. And they're not giving anything away easy. We're gonna get Latour with the serve, but they make you work for every point. And like you said, there is something psychological that, you know, it steals a little bit of your soul. Absolutely. <laughs> when you have a big hitter, you can't get a kill because they're, you know, they're giving everything. And look at that play. Wheeler feeling it, the crowd loving it, 10-4 Lions. Cottingham in to serve for the Lions. Right now I think what Lyman could use more than anything is Mia Atardi to give her two or give them two or three Absolutely. really good Go serves. And just get let them kind of inch themselves into some stability. Wheeler's doing a great job on service team. A little tight. You know, even I recognize that over my time of doing volleyball, that if you can get a server just to give you, you know, three or four in a row and stabilize things, it really Absolutely, changes. service runs are huge. If you can maximize your service runs and minimize the other teams, obviously you'll win every time. And that's a good example right there of Wheeler, 1-1, right back, so. You know, that's important. They're going to have the serve. Skylar Morgan will serve it for the Wheeler Lions. Nice little setter dump by Latour. That was very savvy. Needed something to score and get that ball. Barrow, Ariana Garcia will serve for Lyman. Little jump serve and an ace. I love the fact that we've got student sections and raucous crowds here from both Lyman and Wheeler at you know five o'clock on a Friday afternoon. Lyman, they're creeping back in. And a timeout. And with that timeout, we'll take a timeout. Brought to you by the Burns Agency.
feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Eleven nine. Garcia with the serve. And that winner, an ace, eleven ten. And that one sails long. Wheeler back up 12-10. So in the serve for Wheeler, Anna Ruggieri up two in set two. Lyman, the winners of set one here in the Division II Championship. Ruggieri with the serve. And that one sails long. Back to back miss serves, giving each other points. As a coach, that would frustrate me. That's it is like, one of the most frustrating. In volleyball, that's one of the only things that you can control. You have control over your serve. There's not many things that you control. Like if you get blocked, you get blocked. You hit it, I mean, for the most part, you can kind of control your hit, but the serve is all you. Yeah, a philosophy that I learned and, and bought into my high school uh, baseball coach was a big believer in making the other team make plays. Meaning, don't ever give away something to the other team, right? In high school, these are kids, make them make the play. So like you said, if I, if the only thing that matters if I'm serving, I don't care if it's a lollipop, I have to get it on the, you know, in the other side and make them. Limit your unforced errors. I mean, that's just, that would drive me crazy as well. That's like free throws. Oh, oh yeah. that's a, I'll tell you what, Messina has her serve going tonight. I'll tell you what though, it also drives coaches insane when you're a little too much of a perfectionist. I had in high school and even my college coach, at practice, my serves would be crazy hard, but when it came to a game, I was never wanted to miss. I wanted my service percentage to be so high, and my coach would be like, what are you doing? So there is definitely a balance of high risk, high value, but all of these girls, I'm so impressed. Every single one of those things. Wheeler, putting it to, and we're gonna get a timeout. We'll keep it here. 15-11, Wheeler on top in set number two. 25-21, Lyman in set one. And just listen to the crowd for Wheeler. I'm interested, Lyman has like a big red ball on the sidelines and another small ball. One of the girls is bouncing it. I um, wonder what that's for. Is it, I know there's different like coaching styles as far as the timeout. If you hand the server a tennis ball, during a timeout, that way they can fidget with it. They're not thinking about their serve, so that they go back and serve and don't like they just serve the ball, ball in. Yeah, stress ball. Or my favorite thing that I read as a coach was ask the player that's about to serve a random question: What color is your hair tie? What color socks are you wearing? Yep. It just takes their mind off the serve and it just helps it. I have my. I have to this day. Uh, there is a young man. He's now a high school student. In, at, Bacon Academy, who when he sees me, says ham and cheese. He, and because he was not, he was nine years old on my on my little league team, and he was so wound up in the batter's box that you, he, you could see him tighten up, tighten up, tighten up. And he tried all of these things. He tried biting his jersey. He tried all these things to just get him more tight. So one day, right as he was hitting, I said, right when you're about to, when the pitcher's about to throw, I'm gonna ask you a question. And I asked him what he had for, for lunch. And he said, I had ham and cheese. <laughs> and he proceeded to hit the ball. So I would ask him all these questions. 
and he says he'll never forget ham and cheese was you know and you loosened up but I think anything you can do absolutely to, yeah to get yourself loose so they have like a dodgeball over there on the lineman side <laughs> shout out to my sister-in-law and her family for what I thought was a fabulous Halloween costume they went as characters from dodgeball <laughs> Oh, that was, I think that was a miss hit. A little bit. But perfect. It acts as a. Hey, a kill is a kill. Into the Bermuda Triangle. <laughs> the donut. Campfire. 17 12. Wheeler on top. Butramovic in the serve. And there's that net serve that Wheeler coach Megan O'Connell is going to pull her hair out. <laughs> now we're looking on the other side. Gardella's got to give them two or three points here. They've got to get themselves back closer. They can't keep trading points down four. Ooh. Oh, what a beautiful play from Anna Ruggieri. Uh, but they're going to say the in the net. So that's a big break for Lyman. Instead of 18-13, we should have 17-14 in the Lyman serve. And that stands long, so 19-13. Yeah, I was right, it should have been 17-14. So now it's 18-14. If you look across, you have Wyndham Whippets have a sign, who let the dogs out. <laughs> Very nice. And that's who Wheeler beat in the semifinals to get here. I think I'd be rooting for Wheeler. I'd rather lose to the team that wins it all. There is Latour with a me mega spike that. A great dig by Messina, but right into those rafters and over the net, no good. And as we all know, the person that gets the kill gets the serve, Latour. 1815. And that is a winner there. We'll keep it 1816, creeping a little bit closer. In the first game in boys soccer, we had St. Bernard uh, and Wyndham, a Whippet and a St. Bernard. This one, we have the Bulldog. We talked about the various nature of the dogs. I would suggest the Bulldog is the least athletic of the aforementioned dogs. Whippets are fast and agile. Saints, St. Saint Bernards rescue people on mountaintops and bulldogs snore and drool. <laughs> this is a one point game here in the second set, 18-17. Wheeler holding on for a lead. They lost the first set, Lyman won 25-21. Sometimes the crowd knows exactly what's going on, and right now Lyman's crowd senses that they are in the midst of a run, and they're feeling it. If this, if they can get this point here, get this thing back tied up at 18. Off the timeout, yeah. Off the timeout, I think that'll be a huge play. So Latour will serve. Take a little bit off that first one. And into the net, right on cue, I, I jinxed it. Now conversely, this is where if I'm, whoever's serving for Wheeler, you have to just get this thing 
in play. Give yourself a chance. You want to be that one to get to 20. This is Emma Cottingham. Last time we saw her, she has a very deliberate as well. She served into the net last time, so she's going to want to. All right, don't jinx it. Yeah, no, I see the opposite. <laughs> oh, great set by Latour. Looking for Garone. And there's the kill for Garone. Carly Garone will get it back. The serve will go to Mia Atardi. Looking to tie it up in set two. Crowd filtering in. We're expecting somewhere in around the third set is where you get the overlap crowd. The Fitch Waterfair crowd coming in while the Wheeler and Lyman crowds are still here, and this place will fill up pretty quickly. Morgan served for Wheeler. Ooh, nice little play over the net. This is a nice rally going to Daron. Latour again with that dump, thinking it's going to work again, and it does. I promised uh, Peter Wappi in the uh, pre that I would take care of all equipment with my agile cat-like reflexes. And I said, if I couldn't, you most definitely would. Oof, I'm a little rough. I haven't played in a while. Oh, oh it was off the rim. And it's still alive. <laughs> and it's and oh, off the no. rim. All right, for the folks at home, to be clear, the Lyman ball went off the basketball hoop, off the rim and was almost in the hoop as I was so desperately trying. It is still live. Wheeler hit it, but they hit it up into the Lyman rafters, and it dead, we're tied at 20. Is it bad that I'm more excited about the ball hitting the basketball hoop than anything else? I, that really almost went in. It's okay, us as players, we get excited for that too. Messina. Great dig by Latour. Oh, nicely oh, done by trouble. Latour to keep it over. Here comes Messina. And there's a kill from Michelle Messina. And Wheeler on top, 21-20 in set two. She's got a nice wrist snap. She might not jump like crazy, but she stays behind that ball and really snaps and gets that top spin. Anna Ruggeri with the serve for Wheeler. Good deep serve. Jerome. Going back to Messina is Wheeler. Setting up Garone again, that's in the net. Wheeler, 22-20. And another timeout. And with this timeout, we'll take a timeout. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 22-20, Wheeler on top in set two. Ruggeri with the serve for the Lions. Out of that timeout, she keeps it in. Oh, that one ran down. There we go, nicely done. Did you seriously just have someone drop you off a cupcake? An Oreo cupcake. I won't be biased. I'm not gonna. I'm just not gonna lie. Of the two of us, you look like the one more likely to be able to handle a cupcake than me. <laughs> I don't know. I'm still recovering. 24-20. Okay. 
Wheeler with a chance to tie this up at set one apiece with Jerry with the serve. Nice deep serve. And a nice, I think that was, was that Latour? Heads up play. 24-21. Jerome will serve. Closer, 24-22. No, it is not over. Not by any means. Wheeler's libero a little flustered. Hopefully she can just come back and pass that one a little better. Another great job by Darone. That's back-to-back -back serves. Deep, solid. Setting up Latour. Great defense. Going back to Latour again. Great and a save. huge kill by Latour. Inches Lyman closer, 24 23. One more for Jerome. Will assure them at least of win by two. Wheeler still has another timeout, I believe, as well, right? Good serve by Jerome. That was deep. Going back. And a nice little. It's a great up by Anderson. Will it stay in? No, it sails long. Sails long. Wheeler has tied us up. One set apiece, 25 23. We'll be back. Take a look at the great eight plays of the week. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Time for Game Day's Great Eight Plays of the Week. Let's start off at number eight with some special teams. New London's Jose Rivera busts through the coverage on the punt, eludes his would-be blockers, and makes the tackle for the big play for the Whalers. Coming in at number seven, Julian Cruz of Wyndham. The handoff off tackle, and look at him go in the open field, out racing all of the Lancers as undefeated Wyndham cruises. At number six, nothing more dangerous than a loose ball on a corner kick. And who's there to clean it up? Diego Verhan sticking it in the corner of the net. Goal for East Lime Soccer. At number five, back to special teams, not punt coverage. How about the punt return? Aiden Patterson, 47 yards for East Lime, and he Tiptoes along the sideline, getting into the end zone versus the Whalers, touchdown Vikings. At number four, Zach Robinson Smay, the rollout, finding Emmanuel Vasquez wide open, touchdown Whippets versus Waterford. Hey, how about some youth football? How about Benjamin Greger to Zaire Shedrick for Groton Mystic in youth football? Drop back. The bomb, it's up, it's deep. Go up and get it, son. Touchdown, Rotten missed it. Big play from the little guys. Coming in at number two, Jose Pacheco for St. Bernard's. Do not get him in the open field. The through ball, the run on, one on one with the keeper, and oh, I'm going that way. Broke it down, goal for the Saints. But our number one play of the week, Soren Reef for Killingly, not to be denied. You want to see a physical run? How about this? Poof, poof, blowing guys left, right. What's left? The Soren stiff arm. Stiff arm him. Touchdown, Killingly. And that is your great eight plays of the week. Send us your plays, and maybe you can be in next week's great eight. After the game, we're going to find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Summer isn't over at Foxwoods. Summer's never over at Foxwoods. For more details about all the entertainment you can find at Foxwoods, go to foxwoods.com. Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all.
We're ready to start set three, tied at one. Lyman won the first set 25-21. Wheeler bounced back 25-23. Is the number one seeded Lyman Memorial Bulldogs and the number three seeded Wheeler Lions. Go at it here in the Division II championship game of the ECC Volleyball. And you know, Madison, it's hard not to root for this Wheeler team. I know. Um, <laughs> because they are the definition of team. They're scrappy, they communicate, they're battling. I just love they're on the floor for every Absolutely. ball. It's, it's great to see. Right, you have, if there's a ball on the floor, there's a player on the floor. You're not seeing a ball just go untouched. There's always an effort behind everything. They're also communicating so well. If you see their setter running across the court, Everyone's backing up, letting her set the ball and set the offense up. With Jerry with the first serve for Wheeler here in set three. And the first point of set three goes to Wheeler. You know, linemen who have really dominated this level of volleyball over the past few years, they have won multiple state championships. This would be a huge, huge win for Wheeler. Great back set from the tour. Setting up Darone. That one might have gone long. Mm. Great free ball opportunity, I bet you. Love that lefty swing. Point for Lyman, we're tied up at one. Yeah, Brittany Anderson, the lefty. She's the shortest hitter on the floor right now. But she swings well. And she has also been in the mix on almost everything at the net. Whoa. Setting up Latour. That's a tough Stanley. one for the middle to hit. It's coming around you at a weird angle. You can't get your shoulders around it. Jerome with the serve for alignment. And the wheeler section just keeps filling up and filling up. Lyman up 3-1 in the early going here of set three. Jerome will continue to serve for the Bulldogs. That one is long. And Messina will have the serve for Wheeler. We know Messina has that very strong serve. Yeah, nice and low to the net. But it's a high risk, high reward. Yeah, that we, low, you're not always going to get it over. Yeah, we saw her with two net winners uh, in her first time serving, that time in the net. And Eric Arpin will serve for Lemon. Looks like Waterford is making their way in. A winner for Wheeler. Nice deep corner shot. And as we said, this is of course game one of two. Later on tonight after this one scheduled for 6.30 is the Fitch Falcons. Big upset winners over Griswold. We'll take on the Waterford Lancers. Uh, winners over East Lime and that'll be the Division I championship game. That serve sails wide and neither team able to now a run here in the early going is 5-3 Lyman. Gardella in the serve for the Bulldogs. Gardella on the floor with that one. Nice spot. Doesn't look like they know. Morgan, that one sailed long. Lyman serve will stay with Gardella. Oh, 
Oh, that was a great, great serve. Time. Brooks won about one in the net. So Wheeler will serve. Allison Needham. Good serve from Needham. Brooks drops it in. Darone. Now they're looking for Latour. Wheeler seems to really like that back corner of this game. It's a great dig by Messina. Inching Wheeler closer, 6-5, keeping the serve with Needham. Good serve by Needham, dug nicely by Garcia. Going, and they bumped into each other. Jerome set up a tardy, and then they bumped. Backed into the set instead of going away from it. And we're tied at six. Nice deep sideline serve. Another that's, miscommunication. That's back-to-back -back plays where Darone and Atardi not talking to each other. Yeah, that one was actually, that's Darone's ball. Setter takes second ball. Atardi's got to get out of the way so she can actually hit the ball. We get a double hit. Yeah. And that'll turn it back to Wheeler. Wheeler on a little run right now. Needham's been serving for a while. They're up 8-6. Lyman's got to mentally reset. You've had three unforced errors. Just really basic volleyball right here is all they need. And that's what or they need. Or a misser. Yeah, that's what they need more than anything. They don't have to do anything to get that one back. And they'll send Latour back to serve. going to be tough. They're not going to get to that one. That's a winner there. An ace for Latour. Ties this up at eight. Another deep serve for Latour. And that was that, was that ball that was kind of no man's land. No, and that's going to put Lyman on top, 9-8. To Good deep serve again from Latour. Both teams all night long. It's a game of deep serves. That's a great touch by Ruggieri. Wow. A little bit of a chicken wing action. Messina with a big hit. Coming over to Darone now for Lyman. And we're going to get a yep, double on the stay with Lyman. They go up 10 8. And a timeout. And so while this timeout is on the floor, we'll take ourselves a timeout. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 19. 32. A raucous Wheeler cheering section. They're happy right now because their Lions are battling with the Bulldogs. It's set one set apiece and 10-8 Lyman here in set three. Latour has given Lyman a little bit of breathing room. They go to Darone here now. A little 
tight. Setting up Daron again. This time she gets the spike. That's up in the rafters, but it stays live. Garcia with the set again for Daron. Latour. Sets up Atardi, and Atardi gets the point for Lyman. And so now they are on a little bit of a run here, going back to Latour. So Latour has served, I believe, five straight now for This is the fourth for, for and that's a, an ace. And so good things happening with Cassidy Latour. taking a timeout and hasn't been able to break the streak. Yeah, I don't know if you saw uh, Butram, I can't even say her last name, I'm sorry. Uh, yes. On that serve receive pass, it was kind of like a little bit of a double hit. We talked about that the last time we were together. On that first serve receive contact, it can kind of come off your arms and like roll a little bit and count as a double contact, um, you won't get called. And I believe they're gonna have a replay of that point because that's what was just this, this discussed. So it's 13-8, but they're taking the point off 12-8, and it'll stay with Latour's serve. And that's what <laughs> Coach is talking about right now. Coach Vicky's like, um, yeah, not, not a fan. Not a fan <laughs> of the call. That was, the, that was a definitive eye roll. Well, big momentum change. Absolutely, from 13-8 to 12-9. I was watching a video uh, last night on YouTube that my son showed me of player ejections in the NBA where the oh, player gosh. didn't say anything. So ejections from just the looks that players <laughs> gave officials. And that would be me. And I started laughing. I was like, you know you've had a reputation, though, when all you need to do is look at the official wrong oh, and absolutely. give you a technical. Looks can kill. You know, it's really hard in the game of volleyball to get a red card. you got to be quite, quite cheeky. Oh, yeah. My You'll favorite. See yellow cards for, like, stalling if somebody comes up to the line and then pulls back, like, things like that. But to get a red card is very, very hard. Atardi with the serve for Lyman. Oh, That's what a, a great, great dig. touch by Atardi. It's Can still it alive. It it's is. over. Oh, what a play. Garcia kept it alive. There's a great dig from Garcia. Setting up Darone. What a momentum builder this would be if Lyman could hold on here. Really good dig. But Wheeler calmly settles That's right back in. That's a beautiful set. Uh, the rally of the game so far. Oh, dig from dig Garcia. Garcia. Duran's Here gotta comes get the swing. And Daron puts oh. it away for Lyman. <laughs> Crowd loves it. That was hustle. That's the Lyman program that has won those state championships, those conference championships, Wheeler had been outworking them up till now, not on that point. Jerome into the campfire. Nottingham's right there, or Cottingham, sorry. Right there, both of them. She's just a little too deep, and she's not scooping that ball up, but she got great touches on both of those kills. 15-9. And a timeout. We'll keep it here during this timeout. And I will remind you that after the game, you're going to want to find us on social media at Game Day CT because you're going to have our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Foxwoods Resort Casino at the center of it all. The Beach Boys Holiday Vibrations Orchestra, November 26th. That's a ticket you want to get now. It's go to foxwoods.com slash entertainment only. 
at Fox Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Lyman, right now we have very raucous crowds on both sides. The Wheeler crowd has filtered in. The Lyman crowd is here. The Waterford girls team is here on the far side. It's the John T. Conway Gymnasium is starting to fill up here for volleyball championships. Mia Atardi will serve a 59 lead for Lyman. Let's see how this timeout plays for Wheeler. Right Not a now, bad pass, you yep. just gotta pull it off a little bit. Wheeler just needs to break the run, and this is why Atardi can't be the one that does it for them. Keep putting these serves in play. Do not let the run get broken by, by an unforced error. See Jamie Dimmick checking in for Wheeler. That's aggressive serve right there, and a winner. That serve eight Skyler Morgan up. That was a good one from Atardi. Wheeler's going with a four-person serve receive, which is a little interesting. And a lack of communication, which is very unusual for Wheeler. Lyman feeling it right now. Biggest lead of the game, 18-9 here in set three. One set apiece. Atardi doing a real nice job with the serve. Another one in, that's a good one. Good step in. Right now, Lyman on fire. Cruising here in set three. And Atardi moving around the back line, different angles for her serve. Great pass, great set. Nice dig from Garcia on the spike from Messina. Avery Brooks, they're gonna go now to Darone. Good dig. Messina. Great dig by Atardi. Here comes Brooks. And a block. Three and two. And we're going to get another timeout. And this time, we will take a timeout. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1932 20 to 9. Lyman on top and rolling. Mia Atardi. And really, Lyman has been, it's been the Latour service run and now the Atardi service run that has gotten them and extended this, this, which was a, a lead for Wheeler, has turned into a runaway here for Lyman. I mean, Game's not over. There's still a lot of volleyball left to play. Oh, that, ooh, Brooks. Wish she had that one back. That was her ball, and she had the best chance. Arpin really never had a shot at it. And Wheeler gets the much needed serve here now, and they'll go to Skylar Morgan, the senior. So they break the run. That's all they need is a little bit of a momentum. Nice play by Latour. I don't think she thought that was going to live. <laughs> no. But it comes right back. And that's going to send Ariana Garcia, she of the jump serve, the libero.
Lyman doing a much better job of communicating, going to Daron and Daron, nice dig. Finally getting that offense really going. Ooh. That didn't feel great on Garcia. Yep. That's what they're talking about right now. A little face plant. She's saying yeah. she's okay. Daron's shoulder went right into her face. Yep. It's just a tearjerker. Yeah, I think she got hit in the nose, which, as you know. Instant cry. <laughs> yeah, waters it right up. That's, that's, there's nothing better than you get hit in the nose and they go, are you okay? You're like, yeah, totally okay. Your eyes are watering, <laughs> you can't talk. You're like, I'm fine, it really is. I just hurt need a second. Just give me a minute. And you're waiting, because you're waiting for the bleed. You're waiting for the bleed to right. start. You're like, so you're sniffing, you're watering. No, I'm good, no, right. I'm good. <laughs> I have uh, a yeah, good job, Ariana Garcia. We know how tough she is. <laughs> of course, Grant, you got to remember that Garcia, as featured here on game day, switched to volleyball from gymnastics after suffering a spinal injury, which occurred on a compression injury, which, you know, we know this girl's tough, tougher than nails as it is. Someone talk. Didn't look like anyone was going for that oh, one. What a dig from Atardi on the spike from Messina. Yeah, I think they've kind of figured out Messina. She's got that nice, deep top spin. They're staying deep on her. And she put that one away. That one Atardi couldn't get to. Serve will stay with Wheeler. They could desperately use a three or four point run here from Morgan. We've got a good looking front line right now. Setter is back row. You have your lefty on the right side. Oh, that's a service ace nice. right there. That's a bullet. Now we don't have the Jumbotron, because one of my favorite moments of the, <laughs> of the Invitational was seeing Cassie Latour realize that she was on the Jumbotron and trying to serve while not looking at herself right. on the jumbo drum. Oh, that's another great oh, serve off the basket, so that's back to back. I think Garcia knows that might have sailed long. But real good serves here from Ruggeri. Has Wheeler creeped into within seven. Done. Good talk by Lyman. Going to Messina. Dig from Latour. Daron. Back to Daron. And that one's in the net. Right now, Wheeler's got a little run going. Let's see if we get a timeout from Lyman. Looks like yep. we've got an argument. Not Co sure. Coach uh, Big U, no matter what, is not pleased. I'm, are we going to get another eye roll? <laughs> I think she's trying to say that there were four touches on Wheeler's side. So they're talking it over right now, are the officials. 21-15 is the score as it stands. One set apiece between Lyman and Wheeler. So it looks like it's gonna stand. The official is communicating it. Coach doesn't really, I mean, oh, it's just one of those ones it where- It looks like because Latour is setting, yeah. she gets above the net, but if she is actively setting the ball, Wheeler cannot block her. If she's attempting to go over the net and dump it, which she has done a few times in this game, so the, it's really up to the ref's discretion to see whether she was actually actively trying to set that ball or if she was trying to attack it. Oh no, Another, nice little hug. <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you, Atardi has been banging into her teammates here. That time, Garcia, and she just couldn't get to it, and that's a big hit. Right now, Wheeler is riding the serves of Ruggeri and the spikes of Messina. 
They've got it to within five. And Lyman just needs to break the, break the streak. And there it is. Gardelli gets the point for, we, uh, for Lyman, and they'll have the serve. 22-16, Jerome will serve. Good serve from Jerome. They're going right back to Need that hot hand. Messina. Latour will just get it over. Wheeler will reset. Far side. And that's a winner. Bryn Anderson. Small but mighty. Gets the serve now. Here's that risk reward we talked about. I think this is a good spot down this many points. You want someone like Messina with that hard serve, but she can't have, she can't get one into the net here. She's gotta keep it a little bit higher. Take a little bit off. Nice high toss. And oh, thought about it a little too much. I think you can see came it. Off, you, yeah. can all, you can see her like thinking exactly that. Like, let me take a little off of this. And it came, she just had like, not a very stiff hand, came floppy off the pinky. Floppy off the pinky, as opposed to heavy on the touch. <laughs> Soccer term that I am a big fan of now. And there's a winner from Arpin and uh, Lyman. One point away here from taking set three and a 2-1 lead. To Wheeler's credit though, it was 20 to 10 at one point and is now 24-17. So they did a great job chipping away at that giant lead that they were faced against. Dig from Garcia, looking to set up Latour. And a huge oh, hit by silly. Latour. Kept alive by Wheeler. Going back to Latour. And that one gets it done. 25-17, Lyman with set three. 2-1, Lyman will be back with set four action. You're watching Game Day live on theday.com. So I grew up doing gymnastics. I started when I was about six, I'd say. I did it until eighth grade, so like 12, 13-ish. I went to Texas and did gymnastics, and I quit there. And then when I moved back to Connecticut, I started again, and then I hurt myself, and then I quit again. How did you hurt yourself? I did a one and a half on floor, and I landed two straight up and a vertebrae in my back slipped. I know she did gymnastics for a really long time and then she had some obstacles there and decided to jump over to volleyball, which clearly was an awesome choice for her. Um, she has come so far. So my friend Carly, she was the one who like made, she didn't make me do it, but she like inspired me to do it. And of course there's like still like a lot of physical like impact and all that, but you know, it's like bruises and like bumps, and you know, like, you know, not anything too serious. I remember um, when I was still in college, I went and watched my seniors now who w were freshmen at the time, and I watched them. Um, it was a game at Ledger, and me and my dad are looking, like, laughing at because they were so tiny and so, so young. Um, and just to see how far they've come from their freshman year to when I met them last year, and still a whole nother year, they're all more mature. Um, and just have developed so much as players. Does the gymnastic skill set translate to volleyball? Yes, yeah. it really does. So for like diving and stuff like that, it's important to know like what your body can do for itself and you can really hurt yourself if you don't know what you're doing. So I think it's a good thing that I did gymnastics for this. It really helped. I would say she brings a lot of spunk, a lot of spirit. Um, she's she's my go-to person when I when I need someone to bring another girl up. Um, she just brings a lot of energy to the court. She's all over the place. Um, she covers my entire court. She runs my back line. Um, such a, such a great kid. Such a fun personality to be around. Um, and I just I'm so proud of how far she's come. It's the Division II Championship in Volleyball, and it's live on Game Day. Game Day brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. All that is good begins with a smile, and when you visit our office, your smile is our top priority. Our entire team is dedicated to providing you the personalized dental care you deserve, so contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. 
After the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT. We'll have our interview with the coach and with the Foxwoods player of the game. At the center of it all, it's Foxwoods Resort and Casino. You've got to get over there for the Beach Boys, featuring Holiday Vibrations Orchestra. That's November 26th. Tickets are on sale now. Go check them out at foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's only at Foxwoods Resort Casino, the wonder of it all. Casey O'Neill along with Madison Canistrari and the scrappy Wheeler Lions tied up the match at one set apiece and then kind of tried to get back into set three but Lyman ultimately prevailed. Lyman up two sets to one. How important is it for Wheeler to stay around and hang around in this set? When does it start to become mentally, when does it start to become a problem? when you know that you're, you know, you can't lose another set? I mean, it depends how it goes. Right now, if it, they, if Lyman jumps out to a big lead, you start to panic. Um, hopefully, the Wheeler coach can call some timeouts at some good times, or, you know, maybe they start out and they, Lyman takes them off. They only need one more to win. Sometimes teams take the gas pedal off and can't finish the game, and it leads to a fifth set, but... Wheeler right now just needs to focus on their side a little more. Um, I think there were some more miscommunications and unforced errors on their side that really let them down. Carly Barone with a serve to start set four. It's a great pass to start. And first point of set four goes to Lyman. Set. Anderson in the net, 2-0 Lyman. You know, we've talked about our Foxwoods player of the game. The uh, From behind, the referee, uh, the official, actually looks like he works at Foxwoods with the <laughs> bl black pants and the uh, teal blue uh, shirt on. That he does. Messina with the hit, dug by Garcia, set for Latour. And that's going to be three in a row to open set four. This is what I'm talking about. Right. You know, where does it, even though you're, there's a lot of volleyball left in this set, Mentally, where does it start to become, yeah. Smart choice. Letting that one sail along, and it'll be Lyman's 3-1 lead and a first serve of the fourth set for Michelle Messina. Val Barajas checks back in the game. That's that Much better serve. served by Messina. Great dig. Lyman is definitely more scrappy than the beginning of this match. Defensively, they've started to pick up a lot more. Oh, that was in. You couldn't have placed it any better from Cassidy Latour. That was right on the corner. And Arpin will serve for the Bulldogs. And Arpin gives it right back. And so the serve will go to Bukovic. Denied by the block. Brahas going for Latour. Nice dig. dig. It's tight, but it's still alive. Oh, what a great dig again. On the floor, working hard. There's Anderson. Ooh. And Wheeler hangs on. Atardi couldn't get there. She was going to fly into the net either way. So, Butchermovich with the serve.
It's a great serve. Thomasina with the rocket. Another net, and we're tied at four. Good dig from Garcia. Through the block, Gardella. That was a smart play too, she read that well. And the serve will go right back to her. The person who gets the kill gets the serve. There it is. <laughs> got it. Uh, took me a little while, but we got you there. <laughs> and that's back to back. Lyman's got to do a better job on the serves, especially when they break the momentum of Wheeler. Can't give it right back. <laughs> Needham will serve for the Lions. Ooh, nice little cut shot. Good rallies here. And Barajas couldn't get that one over. And so now here's where I'm talking about. And they've got Latour serving. Up 6-5. This is where she of the strong serve. If she can get three or four serves in a row in, that's the kind of lead that would be very nice problematic. Deep float, sir. And that's gonna be the first one right there. 7-5 alignment. Cassidy Latour will do it again. Oh, that's a good one. Nice though. Messina did a great job for Wheeler. Keeping it up. Whew. Wow, that was smoked by Messina, but just long. Those are some of the most stressful ones to hit. You have so much time in the air just to catch it. See the ball and hit it. Another great serve by Latour. Gig from Garcia. Another setter dunk by Latour. The old setter dunk. Cassidy Latour, the senior, serving for alignment. She was the Foxwoods player of the game. Actually, she was just the player of the game in our Invitational. They're looking for Darone on the weak side. And that was in. just in. Just in. That was very close. We're going to get a timeout Lyman. wheeler as Lyman opens a 10-5 lead. Come back right after this. We're watching Game Day Live on day.com. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Lyman with a 10-5 lead in set four. Wheeler with a timeout. Let's see what they can get here. Cassie Latour on a little service run for Lyman. Another great serve from Latour. Nice free ball. 
Jerome. Barajas for Wheeler. Another point, and right now, this is where I was asking. It's only six, but as it creeps towards 15, right. when does it become mentally, you know, almost not a checkout point, but where you start overplaying because you're a little bit desperate for. There's They're getting ace. to that point. They're getting very, very close to that point. You know, then you start getting tight on your serves when you get the serve because you don't want right. to, you know, give it back. So it's the momentum right now firmly on Lyman's side, two sets to one. You start trying to play Olympic volleyball rather than basic volleyball. Brooks mistimed that one, and Wheeler gets a break, and they get the serve. Very important serve coming up here for Wheeler. Emma Cottingham will have the serve for the Lions. attack on McCoy, or a double. Much needed point for Wheeler. Cottingham will serve again. Now that was a hard serve, but it goes long, and that's what you talked about. You can't have those unforced errors at this point, and a tardy We'll go back, and this was the recipe in the third set. Mm -hmm. It was Latour followed by Atari, where they ripped off two long service runs. Going to Darone. Now Messina. With the lefty. Lyman with a point to extend the lead. <laughs> Atardi waits to get the signal for her to serve again. <laughs> Another good serve. Lyman doing a much better job of solid serves, keeping them in. Mm. Here goes Darone, and that'll sail out. Wheeler. Hanging Not around. Not a bad idea, though, from Darone. That's a great spot. It's wide open. Skylar Morgan will serve for Wheeler. And the ace, and I think that one was clearly going long. Someone's got to let Garcia know that. She was out of bounds when she touched it. I think she knows it now. <laughs> Morgan. Woo! And that goes out wide. Just out of bounds, turn it, goes back to Wheeler. Excuse me, out for Wheeler, back to Lyman. And Garcia will serve for the Bulldogs up 15 to nine. Send Anna Ruggiero, Anna Ruggeri in for her service attempt. Ruggeri. Ooh, that might have just been out. <laughs> oh, way to get on the floor. That was Cottingham that was on the floor for Wheeler. Nice high set. Nice swing. Woo! And put away 
away by Stanley. Nice little overpass kill. Those are always fun. Wheeler not going to go away easy. That's long. Yeah. Now, Jerome will have the serve for Lyman. That's a good serve. Nice dig. Anderson, the lefty. Tough. Setting up Latour. And there's a winner kill for Latour. And this is where you can't trade points anymore if you're Wheeler. So not you have to get this back and get a run. And the farther Lyman creeps up, the harder it's going to be to get back in this thing for Wheeler. And Lyman's done a nice job not shooting themselves in the foot with these serves. Setting up Anderson. And a kill for Latour. A little bit of an off speed shot. Mixed up it. Wheeler had a little bit of trouble. Jerome will continue the serve for Lyman. Back dig for a tardy. Latour. Great dig. Latour with a blast kill and Lyman. Biggest lead, 19-11 in set four, up two to one. Looking to finish it here. Jerome. So that first sort of mental, you know, yeah. threshold has been reached. 2011, and Darone showing no signs of stopping. Timeout, Wheeler. Lyman on the cusp of a championship. We'll see if they can close it out. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. can feel it and we know you feel it too fall is here crisp air falling leaves pumpkin everything and football so much football with a new season upon us it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order the burns agency is here to help you play by play strong coverage dependable service and touchdown savings give us a call or visit us online the burns agency proudly serving eastern connecticut since 1930 the Lyman Memorial Bulldogs, the number one seed in Division Two, on the cusp of a championship. 20 to 11 over Wheeler. They're up two sets to one. And Darone with the serve. Carly Darone has been very good from the serve for Lyman. Dig by Garcia. They're going to try to set her up. And Gardella, Lyman now up 10 and sensing it. Uh, closer and closer, Lyman inching. Yeah, Jerome's got a great serve. She can definitely finish this game out. Yeah, she's feeling it. She's starting to hit him even harder now. <laughs> she wants to get it over. She's hungry. And that lack of communication right there, and I think that's 
if there's a straw that you know breaks the proverbial camel's back, it's right there where you lose your, you know, they've communicated so well all night. Right. And Jerome is gonna hit a rocket here. Yeah, you can see she wants this thing <laughs> over with. And an uncharacteristic Unforced miss hit errors. by Messina. And now Lyman is a point away. Top spin jump to finish it. Is that all? <laughs> Carly Derone, the senior. Another rocket serve. And that's an right, ace an to ace. win it. 25-11. It is Lyman. Three sets to one. They are your Division II girls volleyball champions. The celebration for the Bulldogs. A familiar place for them to be. We will continue to broadcast the post-game celebration and awards. Then we will have on our social media platforms the interviews with head coach Emily Vigu as well as our player of the game, Foxwoods player of the game. And then of course a 6.30 start to the Waterford High School Lancers and the Fitch Falcons in the Division I game. 6.25 a start. That's where we're looking at right now. So enjoy the celebration, the post-game interviews, and of course, come on back for your Division I final here on Game Day.
The following is a presentation of The Day. Live from the John T. Conway Gymnasium at New London High School, it's time for the Division I ECC Championship in Girls Volleyball. The number three Waterford Lancers and the number five Fitch Falcons and it's all live on game day. Game day brought to you by Waterford Dental Health. Your smile's our top priority, and our team is providing you dedicated, personalized care, and that's what you deserve. So contact us today at waterforddentalhealth.com for more information. Also, after the game, find us on social media at Game Day CT for our interview with the Foxwoods player of the game. Foxwoods Resort Casino. Go check out tickets for the Beach Boys and the Holiday Vibrations Orchestra at foxwoods.com slash entertainment. It's only at Foxwoods Resort Casino. The wonder of it all. Casey O'Neill, along with Madison Canistrari, and uh, our nightcap. We saw Lyman Memorial win in the earlier matchup today, and now this is a first time we have a championship game of unexpected teams. Two upsets. Number three, Waterford, getting here via the upset of East Lyme, and in what amounts to the upset of the year in volleyball. The number five, Fitch Falcons, upsetting undefeated, previously number one, Griswold to get here. Uh, the Falcons we saw earlier in the Holiday Invitational, and they have beaten Waterford twice. Tough to beat a team three times, and we are underway. Petrini with the serve for Waterford. It sails long, and the Falcons get on first. Annalyn Cahill to serve for the Falcons. Just out of bounds, Falcons up 2-0. Of course, when you talk about the Falcons, you've got the big hitting. Waterford's bench is not happy about that one. And their head coach, first year, one of your protégés, as Cahill puts that one into the net. Cahill and Tui, along with Fancher, do a lot of the work uh, at the net. And of course, Cahill, the, one of the biggest hitters in all of the ECC. Waterford's serve will go to Lillian Steinhaus. The lefty serve. And that's a beautiful serve. And that'll go. Touch. Big touch that on the way out. Colonis gets us tied at two. And Steinhaus, excuse me, Steinhaus will have another serve. Fancher up, Waterford on top, 3-2. Waterford got here, as we said, after beating East Lime and Bacon Academy, 3-1 apiece. Fitch with the win over Woodstock and then an epic 3-2 win over Griswold in the semifinals. Setting up Cahill. Check that, that was Fancher. And a point for Fitch. Now the Falcons took an unconventional road at the end of the season. They finished with Bristol Eastern and Griswold. Two top-notch state teams got beat 0-3-0-3, but it prepared them for this tournament. They come back and they beat Griswold. Waterford, on the other hand, finished with Woodstock and Daniel Hand and also had to beat East Lyme twice, which they did. Early 5-2 lead for Waterford. Marina Colonis will have the serve for the Lancers. Fancher, cross court. Nice job by Brielle Kelly, the sophomore on the far side for Waterford. Yeah, great adjustment. That ball was really tight to the net instead of going up and trying to hit. She just tipped it right up and over. Kelly, an outstanding young softball player as well. Got some time as a freshman on a very good Waterford team. They're expecting big things from her. 
this upcoming season in softball. Also a contemporary of my son back in the day at Gabriel's Karate in Waterford. They sparred on many occasions. Now sophomores playing varsity sports, where the time goes. He's got a birthday tomorrow, right? Yes, he's gonna be 15 tomorrow, which is impossible for me to believe. He'll be right here at New London, down on Canamella Field, playing football for Bacon Academy. Tessa Cantone in to serve for the Falcons. We're all knotted up at five. Good serve from Cantone, good dig from Kenny. And that's Lean and nice. Tui going right at each other. Advantage Lean. And Emerson Lean, as you know, showed that come back and get the serve. That was a big momentum swing there. Waterford pumped up. Lane with a jump serve, that's a rocket. Kenny puts that one into the net. Tied up at six, and the libero, Aldinger, will go back to serve for the Falcons. Sales long. And Emma Hall will have the serve for Waterford. With an eight. Big serve by Hall, the senior. Early 8-6 lead for the Lancers. Nice dig by Cantone. Tui into the donut. I rotate as to which of those terms makes me happier in the moment. I think you're just hungry. I think it's the that's Oreo cupcake you're staring at. That's it. probably what it is. But shout out to athletic director Phil Orby and his folks for providing us with some nourishment. Some pizza, pizza if you want some. And that one will stay with the Falcons as they have tied this one up at eight. Tui with another serve and. Great Alonis with a big hit, yeah. She called that ball and went for it. Double hit there for the Falcons. Ball will go over to the Lancers. Coming in to serve for Waterford will be Erica McGovero. Setting up Cahill. So dangerous. Annalyn Cahill, anytime she gets a good set, she is very hard to deal with. That one, she got a little break, a little net, a little net action. <laughs> Serve from Dittmore. Great set. Back to Cahill. And a nice block at the net. Oh, a little scrappiness by Fitch keeps him alive. And that one will sail long, point Falcons, and they're on top 10-9 as this thing goes back and forth. Isabella Dittmore will have the serve for the Falcons. And that one will hit the net, sail out, and Waterford will take over at 10. We will try to provide you some out-of-town football scores tonight as there are many games around in the area of importance, including Wyndham and Waterford and, Led excuse me, Killingly and Waterford, Wyndham and Ledger. That one right on the corner for an ace. Waterford on top, 11-10.
Another serve coming for Mia Petrini. Good jump serve, dig from Tui. Cahill was blocked at the net, but that goes out of bounds, and the Falcons will have the point and the serve. And Cahill, because when you get a kill, you get a serve. And she'll <laughs> go back. And that's an ace, as Hill couldn't handle that from Cahill. Another serve for Cahill. Great pass. Oh, I love that. That is a fantastic play. Ooh, Emerson Lane right from the middle. That was a great pass. It was a little to the left to the center. She stayed to the left of the center, stayed right with her, and they set her. That's a great hit. Ties us up at 12, and the serve goes back to Steinhaus, the lefty. Setting up Fancher. Oh, great dig. And Fancher will get credit for that. And as we go back and forth, back and forth. 13-12 Fitch. And Trinity Sweat will come in for the Falcons on the serve. It in. I thought I thought Lane had a kill, but no. Just calling for it again. Instead, weak side with the dunk. And we're tied at 13 in a game that's clearly gonna go back and forth. Marina Colonis will serve now for Waterford. And Waterford back on top, 14-13. Lane puts it away for the Lancers and a two-point lead. It's awesome to see at the high school level. She's running a one ball, which is a very quick set to the middle. You don't see that very often. That was a tough one. Kenny, Brielle Kenny, tried to get over with the left hand, but couldn't get over there. That was a tough set. And it'll be Falcon serve to Tessa Cantone. <laughs> Setting up Tui. And that one's a little bit strong. 16-14 Waterford and Emerson Lane will have the serve for the Lancers. Wow! Jump serve ace rocket time for Emerson Lane. Dig by Sweat. Fancher, that was long. And the biggest lead of the set for Waterford, 18-14. And a timeout taken by the Falcons. And with that timeout, we'll take a timeout. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Agency can 
feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut. We're back, 18-14, Waterford with the serve. Emerson Lane will have it. That's in the net, and the Falcons will have it. So in the local high school football action of note tonight, Killingly, 35-0 over Waterford as the Lancers struggling. They had Wyndham last week, now Killingly, and Killingly on top, 35-0. And in the other game, the aforementioned Wyndham Whippets, they trail Ledger, 13-12 in the third. So the Falcons now cut it to 18-16, and Aldinger will have the serve for the Falcons. Good serve by Aldinger. Tui stuffs Kenny at the net. And the Falcons right back in it. They're within one, 18-17. Dig from Colonis. And a block in the net by Tui and Cahill, and we're knotted at 18. It's a great top spin serve. Set for Tui. Oh, that is a beautiful set and swing. Cahill gets her crack at it. Waterford's still alive. Some heavy swings on both sides. And instead, the Lancers come away with it. And Emma Hall will serve for Waterford. Another game of note, undefeated TRC, Thames River. 35-0 over Cheney Tech. Another big effort from the Crusaders. Good hustle by Dittmore. But she can't get there, and Waterford. And Hall will serve again. NFA 14, East Lime 0 at half. Cahill, that got a piece of Emma Hall. And both teams now sitting at that 20 mark. So Tui will serve for Fitch. Oh, nice dig, but can't get it. Uh-oh. And Arana went down hard. I'll they'll attend to her for a moment to see how she is. So the football of note that we mentioned, uh, Wyndham trailing legend in the third, that is the only competitive game at the moment of note. Nothing else on the board. Waterford, Chini Tech, East Lime all yet to score, but that ledger Wyndham game, we'll have to keep an eye on that. So, Dabria Arana will come off the floor and she'll get attended to. And into the game for Fitch will be Juliet Georges, number 26, the junior. Erica McGovero will have the serve for Waterford, and they're up 21-19. This is a very important serve. The difference, obviously, between a three or a one-point lead. She sails it long, and that's the break the Falcons need. They're right back. 
to 21-20. And they'll send the serve to Dittmore. A little bit of a sutter step on her serve. Oh my gosh. And Cahill at the net. Fantastic. For her to track that ball, I mean, they back set it a quick back one. Usually for a middle hitter like that, you're not going to see it too quick. She was right on top of that ball. All tied at 21. Oh, big play by Juliet Georges at the net. The sub that just came in for Arana. And you see how happy the Falcons are. They're up 22, 21, looking at victory just points away. A timeout taken by Waterford. And this is exactly the kind of game we expected here in the Division I Championship. Of course, for those of you who were not with us earlier, Lyman with a four set victory over Wheeler, a very scrappy Wheeler team. And I talked with Lyman's coach afterwards and said, you know, I talked to her off air and said, you know, how, how would you feel if you were a team that didn't know Wheeler and you got you drew Wheeler in the States? She said, they'd be a miserable team to have to play if you oh, don't absolutely. know them because they're unconventional how they play. She's like, they don't give up any easy points. She said, they are around the ball. She said, they're very, very tough to, to play against because, you know, points you're used to getting, you don't get and you have to work harder and harder. She said, they're going to be a tough out different. for someone. And of course, Lyman, if they can win their first two uh, games, will face a possible Griswold quarterfinal matchup, which would be fabulous. Dittmore with the serve. Big hit from Colonis. Great dig by Tui. Setting up Colonis again. They're coming back to Cahill. And see you later, Annalyn Cahill. That's a kill, perfectly placed. And the Falcons, 23-21 with the serve. Going back to Colonis again. And the dunk from Colonis, good timing. Big serve here for Petrini. It's either tie game or game point. Set point. Net and out. Set point, Falcons. And Cahill will have the chance to give Fitch a one set to nothing lead here in the championship game of the ECC Division I Girls Volleyball. Great serve. You know they're going to want to set. Ooh, swing at that. Oh, Absolutely. Mistake. Emerson and Lane. Lane took advantage of the mistake and buried it. 24-23. It still remains set point and in to serve for Waterford. Lillian Steinhaus, the lefty. Setting up Fancher. Set. Ooh, Good block. Great solid block. Paul and Liam. And oh. we are tied at 24. <laughs> Little rafter magic that time for Waterford. Timeout. Saw it at 24. We'll be back right after this. You're watching Game Day Live on the Data.
feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving. 24-24, Waterford and Fitch in the first set of the Division I championship game. Georges. Now they're going to go to Colonis. Big hit by Colonis. That's up for grabs. Setting up Lane. Get out of her lane. Set point, Waterford. Fancher, and she whips, set one to Waterford, 26-24. Check out the highlights from yesterday's field hockey championship. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com. Side, quick shot, stopped by who, I believe, right? It is. That's and there's in front, it's watch open. Anna Letiri, goalie, great save. Oh, great laying out, give credit, Abriel, Abriel Carey. Went full prone on the ground to stop that shot. Gable. Gable. Spathakis. And then Spathakis couldn't quite get anything on it. There's a dangerous ball in the middle and a shot. And our first goal of the game on the far post. By Nora Walsh. Perfect spot. The ball crossed, rolling dangerously through. She was positioned perfectly. Uh, Lewandowski, and she's making a rush towards the goal. Good stick work. She's in front. And can she get the finish? Oh, nice job by Carey with the save. Weak side of, and a nice job by the Falcons defense. And 55 seconds remaining, there it goes. Settle, shot, save, Carey, nicely done. She comes out to challenge, using the feet, well done. Yep, Paige Gable reverse sticking it to make herself some room to Bree Plu. Oh, nice feet to Nora Walsh. Walsh, out comes the keeper, beautiful sliding stop by Carey. Clock down two, one, and there you have it. Congratulations to the Stonington High School Bears and a one nothing victory in the ECC Field Hockey Championship. Game day opens the high school basketball season back at the Mohegan Sun with the second annual day holiday classic. We'll bring you three games on Monday, December 19th. First, a rematch of last year's Division I championship game between East Catholic and Notre Dame of West Haven. Next, a rematch of last year's Division III semifinal as St. Bernard takes on Daniel Hand. And finally, ECC rivals New London and NFA see if they can top last season's buzzer-beating drama. It's the Day Holiday Classic, Monday, December 19th at Mohegan Sun Arena and streaming live on game day. Second set action ready to start. Now, we on game day love that we're watched all over the country and sometimes we've been watched out of the country, usually in North America, but tonight we might have our farthest viewer <laughs> all the way from Iraq. Who on earth? would wake up at three o'clock in the morning to watch volleyball. Clearly, this person must have a, a player on the floor. They must have someone very close to them because only love could get you up at three o'clock in the morning to watch high school volleyball. Why don't you tell us who's watching from Iraq? My fiance, Andrew. <laughs> Shout out to him. He woke up, he texted me. I all of a sudden I got a message. He goes, I just woke up and I had to think. I thought volleyball. First thing on his mind, the day volleyball. Well, listen, you're, lots of kids wake up in the morning thinking volleyball. I'm sure many times you woke up thinking volleyball. Andrew, bless your heart that you woke up thinking volleyball at 3 a.m. And thank you for tuning in all the way from Iraq. We are not done with this story. 
because I've already got a Hallmark script written and started to be written. It's called Laundry, Mo Laundry Room Love Connection. That's the name of my movie. Maybe it's uh, Love and Suds. I'm not sure yet, but we're gonna, we're gonna clip it. I've got it down. I love it. Second set, Fitch had it in their grasp in the first set with a set point only to watch Waterford rally three straight. They set up lane. Oh, that's a beautiful turn. Calling a net violation. I mean. Emerson Lane, you know, I thought Annalyn Cahill was the most powerful spiker that I've seen, but Lane is a different type that you mentioned her from the middle being something very special. Yeah, definitely. As a middle hitter, running one balls and quicks like she does in the middle is very impressive at the high school level. And for Waterford to be able to pass the way that they do so that they can run her offensively is also very impressive. Usually, high school volleyball, you see those outside hitters mostly. We saw it in the first match with Jerome and Latour. Now we're seeing it with Cahill. Steinhaus will serve for Waterford. Cahill blocked at the net by Lane and Colonis. Waterford jumps on top 2-1. All right, we got some love from the other coast, from La La Land. <laughs> Waterford feeling it here in the second set. Amazing. I'm speechless. She hits both ways to turn back to that left corner. A lot of people don't like doing that. She's a righty. She doesn't want to turn against her power arm. I like that serve. That's an ace. Lefty serve. Steinhaus with the hard service ace with Waterford up quick here, 4-1. Same thing. You're, you played baseball, right? So lefty pitchers, lefty servers are the same way. They get a weird little curve to their serves that come a little bit differently. Serve receive is a little bit tougher. Yeah, Lane took advantage of that and boom! Emerson Lane. There's an Emerson Lake and Powell pun that I want to make with Emerson Lane and Power. <laughs> And I just kind of did it right there. Peter Wappi, what do, you, what do you think of the ELP possible pun that I could make right there? You got to be an ELP fan. Uh, I like the idea. I think that I'm going to give you a, a C on the execution. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> Falcons, get it back. They'll have the serve. Yandelin Cahill will serve. And right now, they need a couple of points off this serve. Oh, good deep serve from Cahill. Colonis. Now they're going to try to set Cahill, but that one was out. And there's Lane again, but nice dig. And Cahill, probably a little outside of her comfort zone distance-wise. Maybe should have avoided the, uh, the spike there. Colonis will have the serve for Waterford. Point Waterford. And I gotta tell you, I, there, if there's a happier person playing volleyball than Marina Colonis, I don't know who it is. She has a <laughs> smile on her face. The, like, her and Lane are just laughing the whole way yeah. through. They are loving life right now. Why not? Oh my gosh, that's a great save. Oh, what pitch. a beautiful play effort. from Aldinger. Looking to set up Fancher. Double hit, Waterford point. Waterford running away 8-2. I'd be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if we had a timeout from Fitch. Right on cue, there's the timeout. We're gonna take a timeout. 8-2 Waterford in the second set. You're watching Game Day Live on the day.com.
feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Head coach Elena Lockett talking it over with her Falcons. They're down 8-2 here in the second set, already trailing one set to nothing as Waterford, I don't want to say stole, but took set one when the Falcons were staring at a set point. Colonis with the serve for Waterford. Fancher blocked at the net. And a point for the Lancers. So Colonis will still serve for Waterford. Elena Halfley into the game for Halfley into the game for Fitch. She gets the early dig and comes right in and gets her team a point. A little too soft of a block. Oh, they're overruling it, saying a net violation. And Waterford will get that point. I don't. Big lead now for Waterford here. Colonis will continue to serve. Hayfley. Now they're going to come here side to Kenny. They're going to say that one was deflected. So oh, wow. Falcons will have that one. Tessa Cantone on the bench. She's still cheering it as loud as possible, cheering for everybody, keeping that energy up. And they're talking over the previous play. So 10-3, Waterford. Dig by Colonis. Kenny, and that is just in. Brielle Kenny dropped it on the line. Oh, they're calling it out. Oh, really? It definitely looked in from here, but line judge called it out. Falcons will get it back. Cut the lead to 10-5. Setting Lane, and a perfect hit from Emerson Lane. She is so good at those angles, avoiding Absolutely. the blocks and putting them in play. And when you get a kill, you get a serve. That's right. Waterford now starting to settle in here in this second set. Lane will serve again. It's a great serve. Oh, beautiful. 
Beautiful play by Kenny. Briel Kenny dumped it on the line. Waterford extends the lead. That one goes out, and the Falcons will take it and in to serve for Fitch. Will be Cantone. So Tessa Cantone. Setting up Kenny, she's blocked at the net. But there is Colleen Corman, puts it away. No momentum for the Falcons as Waterford gets it right back. Eight point lead and Emma Hall will have the serve. Oh, great job by Cantone, keeping it alive. Can the Falcons capitalize? Yes, they can. Big point for Fitch. single ball, they're tipping, they're really making Fitch stay on their toes on defense. In to serve for Waterford is Erica McGovero. Block at the net. Now they're setting up Colonis. Another Great block. Dig. Tui keeps it alive for the Falcons. Setting up Colonis. That was a beautiful set and a killer kill. Colonis. All right, I have three names for the potential Hallmark movie. I'm gonna let you and Peter Wappy when, when we have our next real break pick from the three that I have. Sounds like a plan. Poor Andrew. Oh, I'm sure he'll love it. Colonis on fire. Get in He's the basket. Still alive. Oh. Nice serve, low. Looking for Tui. Tui denied oh, it. Net. <laughs> it was off her back, but they could have played it. Waterford starting to pull away. Yeah, this is one where Fitch really just needs to get out of the mental funk that they're in and gain some momentum for the next set. Waterford on fire right now. 19-7, pulling away from the Falcons. Going to Cahill. Kept away. Oh, alive. Great defensive plays on both sides. It's a great rally going on. And finally, the Falcons, Tui. They are going to need Tui to have some bit of a service run right here as they're down 19-8. Cantone with a dig. Setting up Cahill. Great swing. 
And that is a bullet by Annalyn Cahill. Falcons, just what they need. Tui with the serve, Cahill with the kill. Try to set up Cahill again. Good dig. Oh, what a brilliant play. Steinhouse, well done. Beautifully executed, too. Use your left hand as a setter. A setter jump, you're supposed to go up with that left hand and throw it right over. She found that open court. Petrini with the serve, and Waterford at 20, the magic 20 mark. Cantone, and you know where that's in. <laughs> Who's Lean? Emerson Lean. Do not put a low-hanging fruit at the net, because she goes and gets it. And a timeout. So we're gonna keep it here during this timeout. Peter, let me get your opinion first. We just have to, we have to do a, a play-in game for the number three title. Do you prefer Laundry Mat Love or Love in Laundry? Hallmark title of the movie. Love and Laundry. Yeah, I'll go Love and Laundry. All right, so Love and Laundry is is one of your titles. Love, Rinse, Repeat. No, right. Love and Laundry. Or Tumble, Dry, Love. Love I'll, and Laundry. I'll go Love, Rinse, Repeat. All right, so we have Love, Rinse, Repeat and Love and Laundry. Those are your two finalists. If you're watching at home right now, we want you uh, in the chat to come on in and let us know <laughs> what Madison Canistrieri's Hallmark movie should be. She met her fiance, she's from Ledger, he's from South Africa, and they met in a laundromat in the Dominican Republic and are now engaged, and he's in Iraq. So it's global love here, but, oh, global love. Actually, that sounds like a bad 80s song. Yeah. So right now it's love and laundry or love, rinse, repeat. If you have an opinion, and only a good one, you can send it on in. 21-9, Waterford on top, and they have the serve with Petrini. Inching closer, Lancers. And if you're curious, the last score we had in Wyndham uh, Ledger, it is all tied at 20. As Wyndham got the tying score and the two-point conversion, they were down 2012. They tied it at 20. Aldinger keeps it alive. We're going to set up Lane. Whew. See ya. That is automatic. Emerson Lane is an automatic. And if the Falcons want to stay in this, they're going to have a big hill to climb. Stop her. Cahill, that sails long. Set point, Waterford. Petrini will continue to serve. And there's your ace, Waterford, 25-9. They're up two sets. Third set coming up, can the Lancers clinch it? You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Time for Game Day's Great Eight Plays of the Week. Let's start off at number eight with some special teams. New London's Jose Rivera busts through the coverage on the punt, eludes his would-be blockers, and makes the tackle for the big play for the Whalers. Coming in at number seven, Julian Cruz of Wyndham. The handoff off tackle and look at him go in the open field, out racing all of the Lancers as undefeated Wyndham cruises. At number six, nothing more dangerous than a loose ball on a corner kick. And who's there to clean it up? Diego Verhan sticking it in the corner of the net. Goal for East Lime Soccer. At number five, back to special teams, not punt coverage. How about the punt return? Aiden Patterson 
47 yards for East Lime, and he tiptoes along the sideline, getting into the end zone versus the Whalers' touchdown Vikings. At number four, Zach Robinson Smay, the rollout, finding Emmanuel Vasquez wide open, touchdown Whippets versus Waterford. Hey, how about some youth football? How about Benjamin Greger to Zaire Shedrick for Groton Mystic in youth football? Drop back, the bomb, it's up, it's deep. Go up and get it, son. Touchdown, Groton Mystic. Big play from the little guys. Coming in at number two, Jose Pacheco for St. Bernard's. Do not get him in the open field. The through ball, the run on, one on one with the keeper, and oh, I'm going that way. Broke it down, goal for the Saints. But our number one play of the week, Soren Reef for Killingly, not to be denied. You want to see a physical run? How about this? Poof, poof, blowing guys left, right. What's left? The Soren stiff arm. Stiff arm him. Touchdown, Killingly, and that is your great eight plays of the week. Send us your plays, and maybe you can be in next week's great eight. Right now, the Waterford Lancers on the precipice of a storied run through the ECC Division I volleyball tournament. They beat Bacon, upset East Lime, and here they are facing Cinderella Fitch, who beat them twice during the year they're up two sets to zero, and it got easier. 26-24 when they came back from set point, and then just a real domination in the second set. And Emerson Lane has been automatic. Marina Colonis has been smiling her way through two sets, and there's reasons for all the Lancers to smile right now. What does Fitch need to do to get themselves through this set? Mentally readjust themselves. I think right now they're all just completely down. Um, defensively, they've got to figure out how to put a better block up on Lane. Right now, Lane is really the one. I don't think they've stopped her yet as far as swinging and then overpasses. They really need to limit those overpasses. Like you said, low-hanging fruit, get rid of that. They need to play just more on their side, focus on the, what they need to do technically, and I think they can come right back into this game. Petrini, they're gonna feed Cahill, and that's how you start. Cahill, and I'm gonna give Petrini a lot of credit. Everyone thought that was done as it went up against the basketball hoop, and she came flying out of nowhere, but that young lady right there, Annalyn Cahill, with the determination on her face, she is an all-star, she is a senior, and she knows that right there, she's gonna have to take some leadership in this set. First, the kill, then the serve. Cahill has the Falcons up top, two nothing. Good set. They're gonna feed Fancher this time. It's a great block cover. And there's again. That overpass. Overpass is going to be, and I give Waterford credit, they are very aware of and hyper aggressive to the overpasses. See, there's another, I'm not, I'm not gonna give these away, but the next time Lane goes up and nails one of those, I can talk about her, you know, tagging her name on the overpass. <laughs> that's a bullet, and that's in. Lancer's right back in it, tied at two. I don't think either you or Peter are the kind of person that ever had spray paint in your hands, spray painting your name on an overpass in your life. Doesn't Most strike me as not. your thing. Beautiful serve, line drive. Steinhaus, the lefty with a rocket, putting Waterford up top 3-2. And I gotta tell you, 
I got this at a, if, if it gets to about a five point lead, crossing over into the tens, Fitch, Not pretty. that's when Fitch is gonna have to really learn to, they're gonna have to try to find something. Feet. Big deep. Fancher. <laughs> Madeline Fancher with the big hit and the kill. Falcons will have the serve. Another kill from Lane. Not one of her speed. best. No, she overran that ball. She had that ball behind her when she swung at that one. So she can't get that nice down shot. Colonis will serve for Waterford, and Wyndham and Legend are heading to overtime. I think Lane got away with one there. But I think so too. I thought she. Uh, was over the net, but she gets the point. Waterford up 5-3 with the serve. Ooh, Feed Tui. Tui puts it away for the Falcons. I think that's something that Fitch needs to do this set too, is really start feeding more than just their outside. Get Tui involved. Well, Tui had a huge game in the win over Griswold. Cantone to serve for the Falcons. Nice back row attack. There's Tui again. Ooh. Little nice clean back set by Tui. Lane with a big hit. Here's Tui. It's a battle of the middles in that rally. Two of the best middles, All-Stars, Emerson Lane and Katie Tui. That one goes to Tui and Cantone will serve tied at five. Oh, great pass. That's a great dig by Cantone. I think that's the first time they've dug Lane. And that time, Lane buries it. I gotta say, we started with soccer. We jumped into field hockey. We're finishing with volleyball. Uh, three completely different sports. Uh, and we have seen some fabulous efforts. The competition's been great. But I am really pleased to have your expertise, Madison, because field hockey, it took, it took me almost the entire game before I felt comfortable with the field hockey terminology. And so, you know, things like, you know, I, I never knew about the overpass. I never knew about the donut. There's so much I love about volleyball now. Aldinger. I mean, you made your own terminology too. We'll create our own stuff, it's fine. Yeah. Get the kill, get the serve. That's just a, that, that, I don't know what you mean. That, that's been, that's like, I mean, that's been, that. that's been volleyball jargon since I was watching Ooh. Wide World of Sports back in the, in the 80s. Ooh. Put away, Colonis. So she was lucky, I don't know if you saw the ref, he kind of put his arm out. Um, her feet were in front of the 10-foot line, so if she had jumped and was above the height of the net, they would have called the back row attack and it would have been Fitch's ball. Jennifer Maka Barnes. Ceiling. And that one was a rafter magic for Waterford. Barnes will serve again. Into the net and over to Fitch. 
It's interesting. I think Fitch has a little bit higher of a ceiling in their gym than here in New London, and Waterford definitely does. And you can see these girls pass a little bit higher. In this second match, we're seeing it hit the basketball hoop a little bit more, the rafters. Tui will serve for the Falcons. Eight apiece here in set three. Waterford up two sets to nothing. There it is, that back row attack. She was above the height of the net, in front of, and she jumped in front of the 10-foot line. So a back row player obviously can't just come up to the front row and hit front row. OK, see, there we go. I did not know that. There's a little bit of breathing room. Falcons with a two-point lead. Tui will continue to serve. Up play from Colonis. It looked like Cahill had that one won. Waterford kept it alive and Colonis put it away. And now coming in to serve for Waterford will be Erica McGovero. Oh, that's a great serve. Tied at 10. Deep serve. And Colonis, that one sails long. And this one has more of a feel of set one. A little bit more of a back and forth affair. Definitely. Dip more to serve for the Falcons. Soft play by the Lancers. Petrini with the serve for Waterford, tied at 11. Petrini, who had such success in the second set, Exactly the person Waterford wants at the service line right now as they take a one point lead here in set three. The aforementioned overpass. And Lane. Fitch needs to be careful here. Waterford on a little run, up two. Ooh, a little off stage shot. I think Lovering found the gap there. And Cahill will serve for the Falcons. Cahill with the big serve. Ladies and gentlemen, the undefeated Wyndham Whippets are undefeated no more because the playmaker, James Green, with the winning touchdown in overtime and Ledger gives Wyndham its first loss. Ledger competing to stay in the playoff hunt. That win will go a long way. Congratulations, Ledger Colonels, on the big win tonight over Wyndham, which means there are no longer any undefeated ECC teams. Fourteen, thirteen, Waterford. The lefty Steinhaus will serve. Nice pass. Yeah. Oh. And Waterford again extends the lead to two. Oh, and an ace 
from Steinhaus. Fitz really needs to start digging deep. Three point lead for Waterford, already on top, two sets to none. Low hanging fruit, otherwise known as Emerson Lane's wheelhouse. And a timeout, Fitch. Waterford sensing a championship. We'll be right back. You're watching Game Day Live on theday.com. Feel it, and we know you feel it too. Fall is here. Crisp air, falling leaves, pumpkin everything, and football. So much football. With a new season upon us, it's a great opportunity to take a quick time out and make sure your insurance program is in order. The Burns Agency is here to help you play by play. Strong coverage, dependable service, and touchdown savings. Give us a call or visit us online. The Burns Agency, proudly serving Eastern Connecticut since 1932. Waterford Lancers up four, serving up two sets, sensing a championship here in Division I Volleyball. Yeah, they're doing a great job of not letting up whatsoever. Let's see what the Falcons come up with off the timeout. They need to get it back here, Steinhaus serving for Waterford. Gonna set up Fancher. Nice dig from Petrini. Gonna go back to Fancher. And that time she earns it back with the kill off of the diving McGovero. Falcons need a couple of service winners here. And that one sails out and it's gonna be 18-14. And now Colonis will serve for Waterford with a chance to get them within reach. Oh, an ace for Colonis. Smiles all the time. As hard a competitor as she is, there's a smile on her face no matter what she does. Bunch of the girls, even uh, their coach. She's always got a big smile on her face. Tui, heads up play at the net. Fitch will have the serve. Tessa Cantone comes in. Falcons could desperately use a couple of service winners here from Canton. What a nice rocket. It's a great pass. Lane took care of business at the net. 2015. Waterford is crossed the threshold of 20, and Lane will serve. An ace from Lane. sails out Falcons will have it back but down five they need to make something happen here and they'll send Aldinger back to serve A little bit of trouble. good serve from Aldinger get the Falcons closer Top of the net, that one hurts. And 
And so back to serve is Barnes. And that serve sur sails long, so the Falcons will have it again. So Tui will serve. But at 22-18, she really can't afford to turn it right back over. She needs a couple of wins here. She might be one right here. Free ball. Oh, nice play by Colonis. And there's another winner at the net, and that gets Waterford right there. They are on the cusp. Five-point lead. McGovero to serve. Waterford two points away from a championship. That's a great block on Fitch's side. Use the momentum. And a miss hit from Cahill has Waterford set point, match point. Setting up Cahill. Nice dig. Gonna go right back to her again. And that time she puts it away, Annalyn Cahill. Keeping Fitch alive, it's 24-19. Dittmore will serve for Fitch. Starts by getting this serve in. And then scrapping for the point. I'm full of butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> oh, great oh. dig Water by Aldinger. A little early. Colonis puts it away. And the Lancers are the champions of Division I. Three sets to zero. 26-24, 25-9 and 25-19, the three seed Lancers are your volleyball champions. We will keep it here for the celebration and post-game awards, and then we will have the interview with the head coach and your Foxwoods player of the game.